Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, May 23rd, 528 a.m. Central Time. Grain markets a little bit lower to start off here. July corn futures down two and three quarters at 568 and a quarter. July soybeans down 10 at 1331 and a quarter. July Chicago wheat down three at 603 and a quarter. July Kansas City wheat down two at 823 and three quarters. July spring wheat down 10 and three quarters at 7.99 and a quarter. Uh, Mackenzie, let's start off with the weather this morning. Forecasts for the central U.S. Corn Belt remain dry. Most of Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Missouri, and Minnesota will see little to no rainfall over the next seven days. The extended forecast through the first week of June again offers little precipitation. Temperatures are forecast to be a mixed bag of above and below normal for the next couple of weeks. This is the uh, graphic that's been sweeping the internet. Flash drought possible in uh, central Illinois, Indiana, parts of Ohio, uh, eastern Iowa. This is from WCIA uh, in Illinois. So uh, first of all, is a flash drought a real thing? It actually is. Uh, this is the definition from the government website. Flash drought is simply the rapid onset or intensification of drought. It is set in motion by lower than normal rates of precipitation accompanied by abnormally high temperatures, winds, and radiation. Uh, the one thing that we don't have here when it comes to that uh, definition would be intensification because you don't really have a drought. You don't have a drought to intensify at this point in time. You got maybe a little bit in some of these parts of Illinois, uh, no drought to speak of in Indiana, very little drought to speak of in Iowa. So I don't know. I mean, could this be part of the reason this drier forecast for the central corn belt? You're now into the first week of June and you've got very, very little rain in the forecast for Illinois, for Indiana, uh, places like that. Maybe a little bit comes back in for Iowa here uh, first week of June. But could this be part of the reason that the market rallied yesterday? I'm not going to say no. I mean, part of me says, you know what, it's early. But at the same time, markets are really sensitive. And if you get a continuation of this pattern and you you shift toward a drier pattern in in Illinois and Indiana and Iowa, uh, the places that really, really matter when it comes to determining uh, national corn yield, then yeah, I suppose that that could have been the reasoning. Am I sold on the, the flash drought idea? No, not necessarily. But uh, is this something to keep an eye on? Yeah, absolutely. Keep an eye on the uh, drought, not drought situation, but the possibility of, of a shift toward a drier pattern in the central corn belt um, as we move forward here, definitely. So if you guys are not already subscribed to our premium content, you sure need to do so. Joe, tell me about what you talked about yesterday. Well, on Friday, I did this video regarding uh, the funds and the corn market. What happens when the funds are heavy short or short the corn market uh, into the growing season, when they're short in May and June? What happens after that? I did a follow-up video for soybeans and did the exact same thing yesterday. So if you guys want to see both of these videos, I'll blast both, both of them over to you uh, this morning. Just go to standardgrain.com. You can sign up for the premium subscription. It's 50 bucks a month. You can cancel it any time. There's no other fee. There's no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. Um, this is just 50 bucks a month. Tons of uh, premium content direct from us every single business day, guys. Uh, check that deal out. U.S. wheat is overpriced. Reuters reports this morning that buyers in the U.S. recently purchased European wheat to be sourced from Poland and Germany. The purchases involve around 1.1 million bushels of wheat for delivery between May and August. Well, here's your problem. Um, so, you know, we hear, have heard nothing about or, or we've heard everything about rather uh we've heard everything about the the problems in the southern plains you know kansas uh, we did the wheat tour last week um in bad shape they've have caught some rains in some areas but in any case i mean the problem with the wheat market and the reason it's been unable to hold a rally is because we're just not priced competitively with uh the global market uh wheat out of europe wheat out of russia uh drastically cheaper than what we can offer here out of the united states this is not a huge amount um uh, by any means, but you know, it's, it's, it tells you what the deal is. This, this tells you what you need to know about the U S wheat market relative to other countries. We're just overpriced. U S corn planting remains ahead of schedule. The crop was 81% planted nationally through Sunday versus 65% last week and 75% on average states that have planted 90% of the crop or more include Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, and North Carolina. North Dakota is the slowest of any major corn grow growing state. Only 32% of the state's crop is planted versus 50% on average. The crop is 52% emerging 
emerged nationally versus 45% on average. Okay, let's talk about North Dakota for a second. There's a lot of debate about how many corn acres will be lost to prevent plant or switching in the state of North Dakota. Uh, again, only 32% planted in North Dakota. The average would be 50, second slowest pace on record. Last year was slower, but last year was the slowest on record for North Dakota. Uh, final planting date in regard to crop insurance is May 25th, which is Thursday. And given new crop corn prices, I don't know that there's going to be the incentive to continue planting and take that penalty uh, when it comes to corn. So I think that there will absolutely be some corn acres lost versus intentions in North Dakota. What will that amount be? Uh, I'm not too sure. Everywhere else really looks all right. I mean, uh, Minnesota's all right. Um, South Dakota's ahead of schedule. Um, a lot of lot of states ahead of schedule. Even your uh, other northern areas like Wisconsin's caught up, uh, Michigan's caught up. So North Dakota is the one thing that a lot of people are uh, looking at here uh, in terms of like potential lost corn acres. Uh, what about soybeans? Uh, yeah, soybean planting is also ahead of schedule. The crop was 66% planted through Sunday versus 49% last week and 52% on average. States that have planted 80% of the crop or more include Illinois, Iowa, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. The crop is is 36% emerged nationally versus 24% on average. Again, North Dakota, very slow, uh, but they've got more time to plant soybeans in regard to crop insurance and final dates and all that stuff. So I think you could see some corn acres switch to soybeans. I mean, you guys know that none of this stuff is is making a ton of money or any money, uh, depending on your financial situation, given uh uh, fall delivery prices for corn and soybeans. So uh, the the prices and, and the the money that you're going to make or not make is not really the incentive here. Um, it's going to be more of, of like a weather and timing thing, I guess. So I don't know, maybe some more soybean acres up north, but uh, some of these states are, are moving really quickly here. I mean, Illinois is 85% done with beans, 58 is, is average. I guess the trend that from what I've been told, um, a lot of farmers have been having luck planting beans early. So this may be something that we see some more of uh, in the future. Uh, winter wheat conditions up a little bit. Yep, they have improved slightly. The crop was rated 31% good to excellent nationally versus 29% last week and 45% on average. The poor to very poor rating declined to 40% nationally from 41% the prior week. The crop is 61% headed nationally versus 49% last week and 61% on average. We saw some big jumps in ratings in South Dakota and Nebraska in particular, and I think that that's what helped to prop up the national rating. Uh, the Kansas rating actually declined by a percentage point, 10% good to excellent. Oklahoma went up a little bit, went from 7 to 10. Uh, Texas improved a little bit. Colorado improved a little bit. But your big improvements uh, were in South Dakota and Nebraska in regard to winter wheat. SRW ratings, uh, Midwest, you know, you're talking Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, uh, places like that, still really good, 60 60, 70 percent good to excellent uh, in that neighborhood. So, yeah, the HRW crop's a, a mess. It's probably not going to improve a ton. SRW crop appears to be in pretty good shape. Uh, spring wheat planting improved. Yeah, made a big jump last week. The crop was 64 percent planted through Sunday versus 40 percent last week and 73 percent on average. Farmers in North Dakota planted 28 percent of the crop in one week. Farmers in Minnesota planted a whopping 46 percent of the crop in one week. The spring wheat crop is 32% emerged nationally versus 40% on average. Yeah, some big jumps. So North Dakota is up to 48% done. Minnesota is 74% done. So North Dakota continues to be a laggard uh, in regard to just about everything here. So USDA reported a flash sale of old crop soybean cake and meal to the Philippines on Monday. U.S. exporters sold 225,000 metric tons of soybean cake and meal to the Philippines for delivery during the current marketing year. This is the second flash sale of soybean meal in the past week. I think a lot of this probably ties back to Argentina. Argentina, year in and year out, is the biggest meal exporter on the planet. They had a disaster of a soybean crop this year or have a disaster. And um, we could see some additional meal business as a result, which uh, would not hurt matters. Any sort of export demand for anything uh, that we've got here will help the situation, which overall, you know, exports just uh, not really a, a good deal all across the board right now. 
U.S. corn shipments continue to improve on the week. USDA reported that 1.3 million metric tons of corn were inspected for export during the week ending May 18th. The print was up 13% on the week, but down 24% versus the same week last year. Accumulated corn shipments for the current marketing year are down 33% versus the same time period last year. Last year, Soybean shipments declined 17% from the previous week totaling 155,051 metric tons. Wheat shipments were reported at 407,682 metric tons, increasing a whopping 55% compared to the previous week. Oh, this is a good print for corn inspections. It's actually about normal for this time of year. It's it's good relative to what we've seen, uh, you know, the previously this marketing year. But if you look at this chart, if you guys are watching on YouTube, um, typically, from a seasonal standpoint, your corn shipments are going to peak in like this May to June time frame, and that happens just about every year. So we're probably pretty close to a seasonal peak in terms of corn of corn shipments, and we don't have the sales on on the books to see like a big contra seasonal spike in U.S. corn shipments. I don't think so. In all likelihood, USDA, uh, despite the fact that they reduced their corn export projection uh, earlier this month, they've probably got to come down uh, just a little bit more. The S&P 500 index has gained 9.2% so far this year. A strong first 100 days for the S&P 500 almost always leads to a significant upside the rest of the year. According to data going all the way back to 1950, increases of 8% or more during that initial period resulted in the index experiencing average annual advances of 25%. Only three times in the previous 70 years did the index end the year with fewer gains than it had during the first part of the year. With that being said, the uh, this optimistic economic outlook could still be derailed by inflation, more interest rate hikes, and an impasse over the U.S. debt ceiling. What recession? What recession <laughs> do they keep talking about? The, reset, uh, the economy and the stock market are not the same thing. This is uh, incredibly interesting data from uh, Bloomberg, however. So if you start the year strong, you get 8% or better through the first 100 days. You're almost always substantially better by the end of the year. You look at this graphic that's on my screen here. Look at some of these full year numbers when you're 8% or better uh, during the first 100 days. I mean, you're talking 20%, 30%. Um, there's, it's, it's really phenomenal stuff. So uh, I know there's a lot of worry out there. We've talked about the wall of worry in the last sentence you read there, um, talking about you know maybe this, this stuff could all be derailed by inflation or rate hikes or whatever. Um, that stuff is all, you know, no uncertainty and it's it's all stuff to worry about uh meanwhile while everybody's worrying uh the stock market is acting really really well uh what about oh I sh i'll mention this past performance not indicative of future results guys uh just because this has <laughs> happened previously does not mean it will happen this year uh what about the cattle market yesterday uh so cattle futures were mixed on monday holding their own in the face of higher grain futures feeder cattle were anywhere from 60 cents higher to 20 cents lower live cattle futures ranged from being up 12 cents to down 70 cents, 70 cents. So really no big moves in the futures market yesterday. Cash cattle trade, of course, was at a standstill. Choice box beef had a positive day, gaining 280, ending the day at 303.90. Select ended the day at 283.43. That was down 51 cents. Uh, feeder cattle did close like well off the lows yesterday. That was not a half bad performance at yeah. all. Uh, uh, outside market this morning, guys, US dollars up a little bit. Stocks are about flat to a little bit lower bonds are off a little bit gold's down 20 bucks crude oil up 42 cents in the july wti at 72.47 have a great day guys we'll talk to you wednesday